Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about strategic portfolio management in ServiceNow. My name is Ben Barrow, and I'm a business process consultant with Volteo Digital. I have my MBA in finance, and I am a certified management accountant with over 25 years of IT and finance experience. I've been working with ServiceNow for about five years now, with about four and a half of those years primarily focused on ITBM, uh, which is the old IT business management, which is now turned into SPM, which is strategic portfolio management. I am also a certified implementation specialist in PPM. So today we're going to learn a little bit about what strategic portfolio management is and why we use it and how strategic portfolio management can help us satisfy that why. Strategic portfolio management in ServiceNow is a suite of tools that helps us select and manage our investments, be they strategic or operational. It helps us gather requirements so that everybody sees them in one place and can uh, provide feedback into them. It helps us allocate our resources. We're going to talk a little bit more about this one as we go forward because we can only do so much because we only have a certain number of resources at any given point in time. Um, evaluating the value that comes out of these projects is going to be very, very important because we want to make sure that we're investing our money where we're going to get value. And then once we've selected what we're going to invest in, um, there are going to be opportunities to, to be able to do more than what we can do at any given point in time. So it'll become very, very important that we prioritize our investments and figure out where do we invest first. Um, because if we start investing in too many things and we get too many projects in the pipeline, they're not actually going to get completed as quickly. So we want to make sure that we prioritize what we work on. Um, once we decide what we're going to invest in, um, and we just kicked off those projects, it'll also help us be more efficient in actually delivering our projects and our products uh, and getting things to market faster, getting them in front of our, our users quick, more quickly um, and start adding value as quickly as possible. So why do we use SPM? As I mentioned, due to limited resources, we cannot do everything. At any given point in time, um, we have a very, very fixed number of resources. Yes, over the long term, we could add resources as we need them, but a lot of times in, in the short term, we may not be able to do that. So we can only work on so much at any given point in time. Uh, strategic portfolio management will help us determine what we should be working on, or like I said, what we should at least be working on first. And then once we've determined what we want to work on and when we want to work on it, uh, it'll actually help us execute very, very efficiently, make sure that tasks are getting completed, uh, make sure that things are getting assigned to individuals who have the right skill sets and all of that so that we can complete these projects quicker. And that allows us then to move on to that next investment. So one of the things that's most important to me in ServiceNow's uh, strategic portfolio management is that ability to go through um, ideas and demands and figure out what are the things that we should be investing in. And I look at that as a sluice box, uh, like I'm just panning for gold. I dump in a bunch of sediment at the top of the sluice box. I throw some water over the top of it and make sure it's flowing. And I wanna make sure that those ideas that don't add any value um, don't even get much time spent on them uh, and that th those things that do need to be worked on or should be worked on actually get captured first. One of the very first things we're going to do is we're going to use goal framework uh, to figure out what is our criteria for success? What are our strategic priorities? What are the goals that we want to accomplish in during that certain time period? Um, and in being able to figure out what these are, then we can weight investments properly to make sure that we figure out which are those that actually have the most weight and we should be spending our time on first. Innovation management or ideation is kind of like we're dumping in those ideas as sediment at the top of our sluice box. Uh, and as the water flows over them, a lot of those that have no weight at all will just flow right out the bottom of the sluice box. They don't get any more time spent on them uh, other than a, that little initial review when it's an idea and everything else flows down through the sluice box and gets captured uh, for further review. Demand management is the next 
part of the process where we go through and we actually spend more time on it. We do assessments, we evaluate costs and resource requirements and so forth. And those demand assessments then uh, create scores that add weight to uh, the sediment and stuff. And it settles out in the riffles on our sluice box and the heavier elements that have the most value, the, the lowest risk and the most strategic alignment and so forth will actually get captured at the top of our sluice box. Uh, portfolio management is a, another review. Once we've approved the demand and said, this thing is going to be able to add enough value to our organization and has a satisfactory level of risk. Now the portfolio manager will actually go through those. And again, because they cannot source everything and we don't have enough people resources mainly to do all of the work, they will go through and determine which things add the most value. What do they want to fund first? Now I'm going to go into and show you a little demo. The, the one thing that I like to do is it, when ideas come in, there's going to be a lot of ideas and stuff, and they're going to filter out. So um, once those have filtered out, we've got some things that are actually very valuable to our organization that are potential investments uh, going to through the demand assessment process and scoring things is very helpful. Um, but what I'd like to show you today is the demand workbench and make a few modifications that I typically recommend uh, when you use the workbench um, because it, out of the box, it's using a couple of, of measures and stuff that I wouldn't necessarily say add a heck of a lot of value to our analysis and our comparisons. Uh, the one thing that you'll notice is that there's really three dimensions on this bubble chart. Uh, there's the value dimension, which is obviously very important because we wanna make sure we're doing projects that add value. Uh, there's the risk element, because if something is really, really risky, we may not actually get that value or the cost might end up being a lot higher than we expected. So we want to be very careful about taking on things that are super risky, uh, especially if they don't add a lot of value. So the things that we want to invest in are up here in the upper left-hand corner, which is the top of our sluice box, where the things that were uh, most valuable with the lowest risk and um, they, they had the most weight and they got captured first in the upper in the top of the uh, sluice box. Uh, the one other element that you'll see is the size of the bubbles themselves. So the size of the bubble out of the box actually references what's called the size and it's kind of a t-shirt size. It's either uh, small, medium, large, extra large and so forth. To me, when I look at that, does that really add something to my analysis and my comparison to determine whether or not it adds more value to my organization? Is it better for my organization if it's small versus big? I can't really say that that adds much to it. If anything, it is an element of risk uh, that potentially the cost is going to be higher. Uh, the project, if it's bigger, because it's a bigger project, it's going to actually be riskier. It might take longer. So there's a lot of uncertainties there. And I already have a risk component to my analysis. So the one thing I like to do is change that measure. And it'll open up here. We will go in and modify the Z-score, which is the size of the bubble to actually be strategic alignment. Uh, one of the elements on the assessment that goes out on the questionnaires is the alignment score gets calculated from the inputs from the stakeholders. So it becomes very, very valuable to us if we use it. Otherwise, why did we even collect that information? So now if I go back over to the workbench, what you'll notice is that my values are now alignment scores. They're not the size scores, which really didn't add a lot to them. So now something that I would want to invest in is something that's more strategically aligned with my organization. So the bigger bubbles are better. Um, before when it was a bigger bubble based on size, could I really say it's better or not? No, but something that's more strategically aligned is definitely better for the organization. So now what we want to do is look at what are those investments that are high value, low risk potential, and bigger um, when it comes to the alignment score? So this helps us be able to compare things uh, to determine what things should we invest in. Now there are potentials where something over here might be some compliance thing or some regulatory thing that we have to do. So there might be some things like that. Uh, the other thing that you will notice on here is that 
I have the ability to actually say, you know what, I think that is actually even more aligned than what this said from the analysis. So I can update this information. I can say, you know what, those risk assessments, the, the people who took the assessments were not aware of certain things that might be more risky. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move this and increase the risk. And I'm going to say it's actually riskier than what they expected. So we can move these things around. So then it becomes a little bit more valuable uh, to compare these investments and decide from a strategic um, management perspective, which things should we invest in. The portfolio manager will then take this project here, this demand, and turn it into a change or a project depending on and actually fund it. So that's how the, the workbench is actually utilized. And again, I think it's really important stuff that we actually see that strategic alignment score because it helps us make sure that we're doing the right things for our organization. Today, uh, we did go through and talk about strategic portfolio management, how it adds value, uh, helps us work on the right things at the right time so that we get the most value at the lowest risk. Um, but it's really important that we cannot work on everything. And one of the ways to add the most value to our organization is by working on the right things uh, and making sure that things are actually getting completed. If we start to put too many projects into the pipeline all at once and we're working on everything, nothing will flow through and actually get completed. So portfolio management, strategic portfolio management, most specifically, especially in service now, helps us be able to filter those things down, helps us be able to prioritize what we should be working on first so that we can actually get a lot of things done uh, in the long term and add as much value to the organization as possible. Uh, if you'd like to know more about strategic portfolio management or would like help with your implementation and adding value to your organization, please feel free to contact us at Volteo Digital. Thank you and have a great day.